was Link Exchange, and you started it and then sold it to Microsoft. Now, you didn't sell it, however, for traditional reasons that most entrepreneurs sell their companies. Tell everyone why you ended up selling it. Yeah, so, uh, Link Exchange was founded in 1996, and uh, I, I co founded it with my college roommate, Sanjay. And we ended up growing that to about 100 or so people and then sold it to Microsoft two and a half years later. But uh, like you said, what a lot of people don't know is the real reason why we ended up selling the company. And the reason is because it just ended up not being a fun place to work at anymore. Uh, I remember when it was just five or ten of us, it was, uh, it was actually a lot of fun. We were your kind of typical dot com. We were working around the clock, sleeping under our desks, had no idea what day of the week it was. But as we started growing, it was really, really exciting. And uh, and as we started growing, we hired friends and friends of friends. This whole strategy of hiring friends and friends of friends worked really well for us until we got to about 20 people. And then we ran into a major problem. And the problem was we basically ran out of friends. And, and so we had to figure out how to hire people based on resumes and interviews and we were fresh out of college and really hadn't done that before uh, and I think we ended up doing a decent job in terms of hiring people with the right skill sets and experiences but we just didn't know any better to pay attention to company culture and not everyone we hired was good for our culture and by the time we got to a hundred people I myself dreaded getting out of bed in the morning to go to my own company, which was definitely a weird feeling. And I started thinking if I felt this way, wondered how some of the other employees felt. And uh, and that's really what led us to to sell the company. And shortly after the sale, uh, I left, Sanjay left. And in fact, most of the early employees all left within a few months after the sale. A lot of people today are, are, are looking at you as a, as a role model for other entrepreneurs. What specifically about you as a, as a businessman or as a person do you hope that someone who meets with you and talks to you takes away um, that might influence their life and their business? Um, I, I guess my advice for whether it's an entrepreneur or really anyone, I, I guess, is just uh, make sure that you're staying true to yourself and no matter what you do and uh, figure out what would you be so passionate about doing that you'd be happy doing it for 10 years even if you didn't make any money from it and that's what you should be doing and the funny thing is if you actually do something you're passionate about then work no longer feels like work and uh, and every business has its ups and downs and your passion is what's going to get you through the tough times and, and also your passion is going to rub off onto employees and have this ripple effect onto your customers and your business partners and and so uh, I always advise people to chase chase the passion and chase the vision not the money mm. and it seems to have worked out I want to talk about a, a word that I, I hear a lot associated with Zappos with your work and I think probably around Zappos and that word is wow and it's used not as a description but rather as a verb so it's kind of like asking, how do we wow our customers? Explain why you use the word wow instead of another word like satisfy, please, or impress. Why wow? Um, to satisfy someone, it's usually just about just meeting their expectations. And we wanted to kind of build in this idea that we always want to uh, go above and beyond what, what customers are, are expecting. And, and so that's, we ended up turning wow into a verb. So let's explain this or give it an, an example. I'd love for you to share one thing that recently wowed you about Zappos or a customer experience with Zappos where they were truly wowed. What would be an example of that? Um, well, it, it really just happens all the time every day. We, we put our 1-800 number on the top page of every web page because we want to talk to our customers. And, uh, and when they call us, our customer loyalty reps, which is what we call our uh, call center reps, uh, they, they're really empowered to just do whatever they think will really wow the customer. And so there's no one universal answer. Uh, if, for example, they hear a dog barking in the background, then, uh, and they also have a dog, then they might start up a conversation about, about that dog. Or, or, uh, if they figure out they're from the same home state, then start a conversation around that. Uh, we also do things like promise our customers they'll, get their order in uh, four or five days, but 
then a lot of times, especially for our loyal repeat customers, we'll do a surprise upgrade to overnight shipping. And so uh, if someone orders uh, late at, at night, there are actually a lot of times when it shows up on their doorstep 10 hours later, and, and that creates this whole wow effect that we're trying to achieve. Very cool. One of the things also that I think is unique, um, something I'm hearing a lot about, it's a, it's a practice or a value that you employ at Zappos, and it uh, deals with work-life integration versus work-life balance. So define the difference, and then you know what's the benefit of work-life integration for a company or, or a brand looking to grow? Yeah, I guess a lot of companies look at work-life separation or work-life balance, and, and I think the implication in that is that maybe work is not as enjoyable as, as outside of work. And, and so we really think about work-life uh, integration, and at the end of the day, it's just life. And, and so you might as well uh, enjoy what you're doing. You might as well be working with people that you would choose to hang out with. And, and, and so at Zappos, we really focus a lot on company culture and uh, really m- most Zappos employees, when they leave the office, end up hang out with other Zappos employees because they've developed true friendships, not just co-worker relationships. And not only does that actually make for happier employees, but it actually increases productivity in, in the office environment as well. Because when you're working with friends, there's higher levels of trust. Uh, people are willing to do favors for each other because they're doing favors for friends, not just co-workers. Communication is better. Uh, you can get away with writing two or three word emails without the uh, other person wondering what you really meant by that and reading it the wrong way. Uh, And and so we found that there's just a lot of benefits when you really develop these uh, personal relationships. So along the lines of some of the things you do culturally as well, um, I believe that Zappos provides its employees with a life coach. So talk about why you and your leadership team felt that this was an important um, step to to add to the Zappos culture and brand. Um, I guess it kind of goes back to that work-life integration thing. We found that when employees are happier in their life overall, then their productivity in the office is also better. And so uh, we have a life coach, and, and it's available to, to to anyone in the company as a as a resource. And so uh, they can help set personal goals or professional goals. So anything ranging from financial goals to um, to figure out how do you advance within the company, acquire new skills, uh, weight loss goals, really just whatever's important to each employee. So talking about uh, culture, it's uh, what's great is that anybody really can, can go in and view the amazing, if not um, zany culture that is Zappos. Uh, you, you do tours where CEOs and entrepreneurs can come through the office and, and see what makes Zappos a billion dollar company and such a great uh, culture. Tell us that the number one thing you want someone on the tour to take away and then to go back and share with his or her team or, or the world at large. I think the main thing is really just experiencing the, the culture. It's one of those things that's really hard to describe. You can uh, read about it or or hear about it, like in this interview. But kind of, kind of the common reaction is until people actually go through the tour and see that yes, it is possible for employees to actually uh, be happy, have fun at work, and be productive. Uh, that that they walk away and, and then it'll spark some ideas when they see various things around our office that they may want to uh, implement or modify to to suit their needs. And so uh, there's. There's no universal, oh, there's this one thing that that visitors uh, see and really take away, but usually they get exposed to, say, a hundred different things, and then they'll pick five of those that really resonate with them and, and then uh, adapt it to their office environment. So speaking, Tony, of, of counterculture, one of the things I heard you say in a talk um, is that you said the telephone, of all things, is the best branding tool for a business. So elaborate on that one for us, because I think that is uh, interesting and, and flies in the face of kind of what we see happening with businesses all over. Why is this, um, in this modern age of technology, is the telephone the best branding tool that every business should utilize? Well, I think in today's age, we're being bombarded with, you know, tons and tons of advertising messages everywhere and and so it's really hard to for for any companies to really have a big impact or, or get their message through 
And you know, with the telephone, you have the customer's undivided attention for five to ten minutes. And what we found is that if you get that interaction right, then that's something they remember for a very long time and tell their friends and family about. So we've actually done studies and, and analyzed the data and found that customers that do end up talking with one of our uh, customer loyalty reps, they uh, they end up being loyal and and then there's all the word of mouth benefits on top of that. So, Tony, by now I'm, I'm sure that uh, most of our listeners and readers have read your book, Delivering Happiness. Um, if they haven't, I highly recommend that they do so. So aside from the book, Delivering Happiness is actually an overarching goal or vision for your company, but it also you know, it might not necessarily have anything to do with your product directly. Explain how having a vision that goes beyond the product or service itself um, with the world can increase the strength of your brand and company. Yeah, so... Uh there's been research that's been done by, and you can read about it in books like Good to Great and uh, Tribal Leadership, where uh, the authors researched and looked at what separated the great companies in terms of long-term financial performance from just the good ones or mediocre ones. And there's two important ingredients, and one is company culture, and so that's something we focus a lot on. And the two is this idea of having a vision that has a higher purpose beyond just money or profits or being number one in the market or beating the competition. And what they found is it's it's pretty counterintuitive. If you actually have a vision that uh, has a higher purpose and isn't just about profits or being number one in the market, it actually enables your company in the long run to generate significantly more profits. And that's what they found in, in their research of studying a lot of different companies. And so for us, we didn't know this in the beginning. And back in 99, when Zappos was founded, uh, the vision was just selling a lot of shoes. Let's just sell, let's just be the market leader in shoes online. And then about four years into it, we all kind of sat around one day and asked ourselves, what do we want to be when we grow up? Do we want to be about shoes or do we want to be about something more meaningful? And that's when we decided to build the Zappos brand to be about the very best customer service and customer experience. A couple years later, we decided to actually make company culture not only important because it it had always been important because I didn't want to repeat the same mistake I had made at Link Exchange. But uh, instead of just saying it's important, actually make it a business strategy and actually make it the number one priority of the company with the belief that if we get the culture right, then most of the other stuff like delivering a great service or building a long-term enduring brand or business will just be a natural byproduct of that. And so uh, now that we're selling a lot more than shoes and uh, have expanded into clothing and and, and other product categories, the way we really think about our brand now, uh, at least up until recently, we refer to it as the three C's, delivering happiness through the three C's, uh, meaning clothing and other product categories, customer service and company culture. And actually, we very recently uh, just moved our headquarters from a suburb of Las Vegas to downtown Las Vegas and it's actually the former city hall and we really saw this as an opportunity to do something different. One, we were excited to really use this as an opportunity to improve our company culture because uh, we were previously spread amongst three different buildings and, and now we finally have everyone under one roof. But it's also uh, in an area of downtown Vegas that uh, most tourists don't know about. Most tourists, when they think about Vegas, they think about the casinos on the Strip, or if they know anything about downtown, they're only aware of the old casinos and the overhead light show. And so uh, there's actually an area called Fremont East where uh, it's actually, if anything, almost the complete opposite of the Strip, and uh, it's very community-focused, and there's a lot of uh, entrepreneurs and, and creativity happening there and and we saw this as an opportunity to really help revitalize an area that had not been doing well for for quite a while and so uh, just we decided to actually expand our three C's and add a fourth C and that fourth C being community and so now what we want the Zappos brand to be about is delivering happiness in the form of products so that's the clothing and footwear categories and, and other product categories uh, in terms of customer service, in terms of uh, company culture, making employees happy, and now really making a big effort to make Zappos one of, if not the most community-focused uh, uh, companies out there, and, and really 
uh, integrating the community and, and, and helping take the community and the surrounding e ecosystem to the next level. Yeah, which is extraordinary. I've uh, read a lot about it, what you're doing. It's been described as the entrepreneur's Disneyland, so to speak. And so I want to have you talk about how the entrepreneur actually figures so prominently into your plan. Um, and then talk also about how you think other businesses, when they start focusing on making a difference within their community, the connection between the business and the community and how that can be part of the master plan of, of um making a business successful when it does refocus its attentions on what it can do to improve the community in which it lives in and the community in which um, surrounds it. So, so talk to us about kind of the intention behind that and, and, and what you'd want somebody to draw from that to relook, take their sights and relook at their own community and how they might be able to contribute to it. Well, uh, it's really driven by a, a few different things. One is research has shown that every time the size of a city doubles, a productivity or innovation per resident increases by 15%. But when companies get bigger, the opposite actually happens. Uh, productivity and, and innovation per employee actually ends up going down. And so part of what's driving it is really just trying to avoid that fate and, and trying to create this uh, kind of uh, it's, it's not black and white where there's the company and then there's the community and, and the two don't interact, but really trying to weave the two together. So we've designed our campus to invite the community in and we're encouraging employees to actually spend time outside the office, uh, getting to know people outside of Zappos and, and contributing outside of just stuff that's directly beneficial to Zappos. And part of the reason for that is because most innovation actually comes from something outside your industry being applied to your own. And, and a lot of the great ideas at Zappos have actually come from outside the office, outside of conference rooms. It could be some random conversation at a coffee shop or a bar. Uh, it could be running into someone from a completely different industry uh, that sparks some idea that actually ends up, we find, can be applied at Zappos. So now I, I, you're you're spending millions of dollars f for these new offices for your employees. The trend, however, particularly it seems with the younger generation, is it's leaning towards working from home or, or working remotely. Share your thoughts on the concept of working remotely uh, and why you've chosen to, to mold the Zappos model um, in complete opposite of this. Well, I guess it's not so much about whether you're working remotely or not. It's about, uh, we use the word collisions a lot. It, it's really about whether you're colliding with, with people both uh, inside and outside the company. So typically working remotely means that you're home by yourself and, and therefore you can't really collide with anyone. And so we think a lot about collisions uh, both on campus and, and off campus and uh, things that drive more collisions in a campus environment uh, are things like density of, uh, of the office and space. So I think uh, in the US average density is about two or three hundred square feet of office space per employee and we're actually now at just under a hundred square feet per employee and, and there's actually been research that's been done that shows that when you sit twice as far away from someone in an office environment you don't see them half as often you actually see them half as often squared so a quarter as often and so density can actually make a make a big difference and we also do things like uh, instead of having uh, multiple entrances and exits uh, throughout the entire campus to get to the parking garage or, or out to the rest of the city. Uh, we kind of have a central plaza and really there's just one or two entry and, and exit points in, and so that'll result in more collisions as well. And by employees, encouraging employees to go out into the community and, and we encourage them to go work uh, remotely in the sense that it's off campus, but it's in a semi-public space, meaning a cafe or a co-working space, uh, and, and those actually result in more chance encounters. So we're not against uh, remotely in the sense of being away from the office, but we do think that it makes a huge difference if you're in a place where you can have these serendipitous encounters, and it's pretty hard to do that if you're working home alone. Wow, that's uh, that's interesting. Increasing the uh, the collision rate. So, I, you know, this is a good example, Tony. You represent you know one of the greatest entrepreneurial minds of today. I'm curious, who represents that to you? I mean, who are one or two people that you admire specifically about their traits and qualities, and that 
that you kind of look to to model yourself or at least draw inspiration from? I don't think there's any one single person or company or we've been asked this same question before about books as well that that uh, we try to follow specifically. It's really about uh, just getting exposed to a lot of different people and different companies and, and different books and then uh, and, and then kind of trying to combine all of the different I- ideas. And so, uh, you know, from a customer experience point of view, uh, in and out Burger is, uh, is a company that I think is doing a really great job. Uh, they're, I think, just on the West Coast, so maybe not all of your uh, listeners are aware of them. Um, and again, I think it's not even necessarily just famous business gurus. It's really, I think that's part of what's exciting about meeting people from different industries. Uh, I really take the approach that I think everyone has some sort of superpower and, uh, and, and meeting someone, whether they're in business or not, just figuring out what that superpower is and there's something that you can learn from that. Huh, I like that. That's a great uh that's a great way in which to look at um, your interaction with anybody is, you know, what's that unique superpower that this person has that I might be able to draw from in order to increase my own, you know, strength in an area, my own inspiration, my own ideas. So, Tony, this is uh, this has been really great. Now, to wrap up our, our time together today, I have just one last question for you. Being that you're considered um, an entrepreneurial visionary, share the biggest thing you see in the future that will change the way entrepreneurs build and, and run their businesses? What do you think sh- um, should happen that will change the landscape of business as we know it? Um, I think that uh, more and more self-organization will, will be be happening. And, and in a way, that's kind of what a city is. It's, it's a bunch of self-organized entities uh, working in, in the same environment. And also, I think that companies are becoming more and more transparent uh, whether they like it or not, you know, with everyone being hyper-connected and information traveling faster and faster. And so uh, I think it used to be that you could, uh, a large corporation could project one image and internally have a completely different culture or environment from the image they're trying to project. And I think that those days are are coming to an end. And uh, and ultimately, what that means is that a company's culture and a company's brand are really just two sides of the same coin. The brand is just a lagging indicator of the culture, and that lag is becoming less and less. And, and so I think uh, things like 